Now we're gonna talk about color theory. In my opinion, probably the closest analysis ever toes the line towards pseudo-intellectualism. At least, that's the feeling in my gut I have trouble shaking. But while it may not always have something thought out in every piece of art from every person who's ever done it, this is a renowned form of art critique and style that has been a part of public art discourse since the turn of the century in 1704 with Isaac Newton's theory of color. Since then, the way we naturally associate emotion and ideas with colors has been studied thoroughly, including with special mental elements that amplify these subconscious feelings, like synthesia, which naturally associates for the person different mediums with each other. For example, to people with synthesia, things can taste red or sound pink. So before you give in to your natural implications, keep in mind that there is some validity in color theory, even on a biological level, with the way our brains compartmentalize and associate things subconsciously. And as for the art that created Persona, at least, if we've seen already, through my other analysis videos, that the structure and characters are handled mindfully elsewhere, why should we arbitrarily decide that we're too good for it and that it stops here? Especially when, and here's the most validating part, the people doing the character designs are well-renowned and paid character designers. I think we shouldn't dismiss it. Let's have fun taking color theory to task as we look at the overall design for our main cast of characters in Persona 4. Shigenori Sojima, the artist behind Persona 3 through 5, among obviously countless other Atlas titles, who did all the character designs and was the one who decided Persona 3 would be blue, Persona 4 yellow, and Persona 5 red, has already stated how he was mindful with how these colors would present certain emotions. He admits that it was semi-unintentional with Persona 3, but when Persona 4 rolled around, he wanted a happy and more uplifting tone represented by something like a yellow handkerchief of happiness, giving it a cheerful vibe, which of course stands by the color theory interpretation of it. But also probably just matches your natural intuition, because for most people, that's how color theory works. Yellow is often associated with things like optimism, idealism, hope, sunshine, and summer. He also cloaks a dark yellow over the murder scenes to give it this sickish vibe. Some negative emotions naturally associated with yellow are illness, hazard, and things like deceit. So since we have on record Sojima considering aspects of color theory into his design on Persona 4, I think it's now more than reasonable to draw analysis here. In fact, Marie in some of her social links even makes slight fun of the fact that Chie is always wearing greens and Yukiko is wearing reds and pinks. So let's jump into the main cast and see some of what their design says about them. I'm gonna round back to Yosuke, but how about we hit Chie first? with our car. No. <laughs> Chie is primarily green with yellow stripes. The positivity and idealism is something that we already have covered is part of yellow, and makes sense with Chie's positive mentality. The fact that she ends up actually dedicating herself to becoming a police officer in her future is something to consider too. Wanting to help bring up and keep the peace in her town that she's already fought so hard for, green is also associated with youthfulness, something shown in her childish idea of training by doing kung fu moves despite no longer being a kid and actually not putting effort into proper technique. Other traits like youthfulness and vigor contribute to her energetic nature with green, but possibly best of all, green stands for envy. Heck, we even have a common phrase that someone can be green with envy. Chie's initial character arc comes from her envy toward her more classically feminine best friend Yukiko, and her feelings of insecurity as to not being a great woman in her own eyes. Being envious of the pretty and ladylike girls unlike herself. Um, also, in some portraits, she also has a jacket open, exposing a white shirt, which also can stand for pure youthful nature. Interestingly enough, and very wholesome, is after the time skip, there is no green on her person at all. The lack of green obviously leads into her character arc finally overcoming her insecurity and envy through the events of last year, and having the yellow present in her other outfits still make it up to rest here. It shows that she still has that positivity and idealism turned up even more after facing herself and maturing as a person. Blue is now, from an occasional minor color, the other dominant color on her outfit, and I think in this context it represents its meaning of truth and confidence. Her gained confidence on who she is as a person and as a woman. Her gained truth through the trials conquered. 
Now back to Yosuke as I promised. Yosuke is defined through most of his outfits with primarily orange with stripes of red. Red obviously has association with anger, but it also has a connection with passion in general. As Soljima pointed out himself when giving an interview on deciding to give Persona 5 its red color focus. This passion toward the case, this even more outspoken anger toward the killer, being personally connected to a person killed there. The orange, I think, balances this as it represents humor, warmth, flamboyance, and enthusiasm. Yosuke's warmth and humor is something that defines and makes him sit out from the rest of the group quite strongly, having a sort of radiant comfort to him in some scenes. He's still hot-tempered and drawn by negative desires as well, but generally I think this all fits Yosuke to a T. In his true ending appearance, his orange and red have melded mostly into a slightly reddish pink color. Pink is associated often with contentment and of someone who is happy and healthy. This innocent, relaxed self also fits in with the idea of the inner self conquered and an era of peace after the game's conclusion. Yukiko has a more varied primary focus outfit to outfit, but generally has a base of red and white, which transitions into pink, which also fits her persona, Konohano Sakaya, who uses fire moves and mythologically is tied to pink cherry blossom trees, even emphasized in her ultimate fire move, burning petals. I'll attempt not to repeat myself too much as we go on, but in Yukiko's case, red representing love makes sense in the same way that Chie's green meaning envy did. Her personal insecurity and wanting to be swept away by someone who can love and take care of her is central to the conflict of her dungeon. The pinks, on the other hand, while representing innocence as I said before, they can also refer to things that are soft, delicate, and traditionally feminine in nature. This makes sense as Yukiko is easily the most reserved, classically feminine, quiet, and traditionally Japanese of the bunch. I mean, she's the only one they went out of their way to give black hair and is repeatedly called things like traditional beauty other than the obvious connection to an old Japanese inn. Once again, at the end of the game, the red is almost entirely gone from her outfit, instead cloaking her in a light, gentle blue, coming back to trust, truth, and unity that represents the color. There's plenty of other things it represents with her here as well, although they honestly just sound like synonyms at this point, so I'll leave it there. Kanji is normally adorned in blacks and dark colors, giving us a look at both sides of him from our wrong first impression in-game and our knowledge of him when we understand him. Black can mean, obviously, as seen in millions of metaphors and examples since the beginning of time, ever, evil. It means fear, unhappiness, and mystery, which all fits the feelings of curiosities of the early investigation team and town of Inaba toward Kanji at the early part of the game, before rescuing and seeing his dungeon. On the flip side, black often represents sexuality, power, and a rejection of proposed norms. Kanji being someone torn and confused by his sexuality and being against societal norms by being into traditionally feminine interests fits him too well. The other colors we see pop up in prominence are yellow and purple. Yellow, as we've covered, can refer to joy, optimism, and hope. I think this is the vibe that's given by a black jacket draped over his shirt. That inside, Kanji is a sugar bun of simple happiness, a good ideal friend who really cares and is very sensitive, but feels too afraid into holding on a facade that keeps that true self hidden. The purple, as we haven't covered yet, can refer to transformation while still holding on to connection to ideas of eroticism and sexuality from his other colors. This purple is only seen in the last month of the playable game, so his transformation makes sense to show purple, all he's gone through and now all he's grown. At the end of the game, just like every other character we've covered, Kanji loses his primary color, the black representing and associating with his insecurity conquered, with exception to his naturally black hair now, which could be taken to mean that he has come to grips and accepted who he is, no longer putting on a facade. The white and yellow also being prominent shows his willingness to show a more authentic, trustworthy, ideal, and joyful self openly after conquering his inner self and feelings over the previous year. 
Risei Kujikawa is overwhelmingly pink and orange, both colors we've already covered. Her energy, flamboyance, and vibrancy fitting her tendency to joke and poke fun at others like Kanji and the other girls being made apparent. The pink being romantic, charming, playful, and feminine also makes sense. For God's sakes, she's literally the lover's arcana. She's pink, which means love. It's not that hard to see. Her outfit ending in primarily blue, though, with some pink, covered in a partly transparent white top, the blue and white feels like a theme again and again. The truth, unity, and confidence carries over with our Persona cast together, as they come together after conquering themselves and Izanami's plot to make them avoid that truth. Naoto is blue. Oh, so blue. She's very blue all the time. Her hair is blue. Her hat is blue. She's basically always wearing blue and forever. I think if I were to extrapolate a meaning of this dark blue, it would probably be stability, since we consistently see that as part of her design. It also represents someone concerned with order and security. The security also makes sense with her dungeon being a literal secret base, all based around security protocols and threats. Sometimes blue refers to cold, in both temperature and perception of socialization someone who is cold, reserved, and standoffish. A description of dark blue sometimes is conservatism, not politically, obviously, but emotionally, personally, conversing and protecting the self. That's something we see a ton with Naoto through the game, in her inability to properly understand jokes or really converse with others in an open manner. In her shadow self, a yellow tie appears, showing a sort of emphasis on the negative traits of yellow, jealousy, covetousness, and idealism, although not in a negative way, wholesale. Her final outfit is overwhelmingly white, representing the same as the previous to her. But note that the outfit design accentuates exposed arms and a more feminine shirt giving focus on her defined bust. This also shows how the blue and white she has now has turned into that confidence and self-assuredness that she wanted about herself, a level of inner peace that she loves and accepts herself as who she is, even enough to confidently show herself that way to others. Now let's try to run a little bit more of an abbreviated speed round for some characters not in our main party. Nanako is almost always primarily in white with some pink, representing purity, innocence, and love. Adachi is cloaked in a dark, almost black color, representing his identity, with a deeper red tie showing his anger. Red also represents blood when mixed more darkly rather than bright and colorful. In contrast, Dojima actually wears a light gray and bright red tie, the bright red referring more to positive traits like passion and strength, but aggression and anger are still a part of his character there as well. The gray or silver is more earthly, grounded, and natural. Ai Ebihara focuses on pink and white, lives up to her name and general personal focus as well, but you've probably heard me ramble on about her already, so... If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the video I made on her link. And if it's not up, hey, here's an opportunity to subscribe and turn on the bell. It'll be out soon, eventually. I think with what I've said, you can pretty accurately deduce the general goal of each of the character's outfits from here on out. But I thought this would be a fun, interesting change of pace, and a good moment to focus on the more subtle aspects of professional art whenever it comes to context of story and narrative, that you usually don't see a lot outside of school. Anyways, on to the next segment. If you haven't subscribed, please turn on the bell, like I said just a moment ago, so that you can see all the videos when they come out, and to help these videos actually succeed and reach other Persona fans, please like and leave a comment. I appreciate it an absolute ton. I can't ask for it enough. Please, dear God, please. Uh, also, if you know any places where Persona fans gather that may find interest in this, please share it with them. So. Thank you so much to my patrons and everybody else who allows me to continue going. I'll see you soon.